Good morning and welcome to Cindy's Kitchen. We're back. Did you miss us? I know it's only been a day, but good to see everyone. If you're brand new, we are a cooking community. We laugh, we chuckle, we tell some jokes. It's about 30, 45 minutes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. If you're brand new, make sure you say hello and tell us where you're from. And if you're watching the replay, don't forget to put hashtag replay so that we can say hi to you. Good morning. Hello, Julie. Look who's all coming in. Julie and Debbie and Cheryl and Joanne and Laura. Jan, good to see you. A uh, cloudy Illinois, Debbie. Good morning, sunshine, Joanne. You know it's supposed to be 70 degrees here in, in Houston today, so. <clears throat> Mary's here, Jessica's on. Hello, Cheryl from Cyprus, good to see you. There's Nell and Margaret. Katrina, good morning. Oh, there's Terry. I don't know how many of you, um, Nell from North Carolina, I don't know how many of you watched um, Rebecca on More Polish Pottery's little show this morning. This was one of the cups that she, one of the mugs, this is an Andy's mug that she featured. I think she featured it because I told her that's what I was drinking out of. <laughs> good morning, Terry. Hey, Deb and Dorada, good morning. Good to see you. I like when you guys do little flowers. It makes me happy. So, when you're looking at the tagline for today, you might be saying, the basics, what is she doing? Well, I kind of let my kitchen get away from me. Hey, Keisha, good to see you. Kathy from Illinois. There's Lori and Sue. Deb from Iowa. I kind of let my kitchen get away from me. And part of that is um, just being busy. Hey, Gail from Chicagoland. It's cloudy there. Okay. Hi, Lori. Hi, Joan from Illinois. I can't see. Carmel Ann. Carmel Ann, good to see you. 44 in Michigan. Oh, my. Good morning, Sue, with your flowers. Anyway, um, I had my infusion yesterday, and so yesterday I was kind of icky. I'm almost back to good. The day after the infusion, I usually feel a little, ugh, so there you go. Oh, Dorada, you're in Massachusetts. Good to see you. Hi, Kim. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started because, you know, lots to get done. I am replenishing, restocking the basics in Cindy's kitchen. These are things that I always have in my kitchen, and so I thought we've done almost all of these. Have we done all these? Yes, we've done all of these on Cindy's Kitchen. But it's not a one and done deal. Good morning, Lisa. How is Florida today? Is Florida good today, Lisa? Um, these are not one and done. These are things that I normally do once a week, once every two weeks, something like that, so that I can keep the pantry, the freezer, or whatever stocked for things that I make a lot of. And so that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to be doing one, two, three, four, five different things today. So we need to get on the stick. All right, everybody raise your mug, raise your whether you're having coffee or tea, maybe you have a glass, and let's do clinks, let's do coffee clinks. Cheers. Mmm. Yum. All right, we're gonna start with hamburger magic. Now we've done this several times, but I'm doing it again because my freezer is out of cooked, prepared hamburger meat. And I know that some of you may uh, turn your nose up at tube O hamburger meat, but it's this is a five pound tube of hamburger meat. Even if you live by yourself, I encourage you, if you don't like tube O meat, that's fine. It's just cheaper. It's still 80-20. Um, but it tends to be cheaper than buying it a pound at a time or buying it in the cute little pla uh, styrofoam squares. So, that being said, to do this, I, and I'll explain, um, Hamburger Magic is the best, isn't it, Lisa? I got this from Tammy Van Hoy, who was the owner and founder of Homemade Gourmet, and she used to do this. I got in the habit, and now I can't stop. 
When I cook hamburger meat in the skillet, that grease, ugh, even if you try to drain it, it's never great for me. It gives me an upset tummy. Good morning, Tommy. And so, I steam my hamburger meat, and I do it in bulk, okay? So, you need a steamer. Now, I have this big steamer. So, here's the steamer basket, and I've got probably an inch of water in the bottom. There you go. Oh, you need a blank for ideas. All right, so, good morning, Anne, in the UK. Vicki, happy Thursday. Vicki, I hope... I hope we're still friends, because um, cause I know I got that mug you wanted, but I really wanted that mug, too. I'm sorry. There was only one, and I punched it before you did last night. <laughs> All right, so I have my, uh, my steamer, double boiler, whatever you want to call them, right? <clears throat> if you have a smaller one, you could certainly do the smaller package of, of meat. I'm just going to take my knife and run it down the plastic, just so I can get it all out of there. La la la, let's start it with the la 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 early, right? Good morning, Deanne and Lydia. <laughs> That's okay, Cindy. All right, so I'm going to, oh, let's put this here so you can see, and then, cause I don't wanna get my hands all icky, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn it out into the pot. There we go. Look, empty, okay? Now I can throw that away. Now, here's some options for you. Hold on, move, puppies. I had always used a wooden spoon or a wooden spatula. Oh, no, Vicki, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope she gets some more in. Oh, Lydia, we're replenishing my basics. So the first thing we're making is hamburger magic. So now this is five pounds of hamburger. I used the one in the tube. I've put it in my uh, steamer basket. See the steamer basket? Inch of water in the bottom. Now, you can, I'm, I'm gonna put a little salt in there um, and a little pepper, and that's really it because I'm gonna use this for several things. All right, so I'm gonna put this on the stove on high because we want the water to boil, and then every now and then we'll, we'll just break it up. Again, what I was saying is, so I use either a wooden spoon or a wooden spatula like this to break it up. But one of the greatest things, if you didn't already know, when you're cooking your hamburger meat, whether it be steaming it or cooking it in a skillet, to break it up into smaller pieces is to use your potato masher or masher, whatever you call them, whether you have one of these that's round or whether you have one of these that's zigzag. Whichever one you have, you can use that when you do your meat, and it's a little easier to break it up into smaller pieces than to have to continually do one of these numbers. So, whatever your joy is, wooden spoon or one of the mashers, there you go. Good morning, Deb from North Carolina. All right, we're gonna get this, on, and I'm gonna put the lid on it, and we're gonna get that going. All right, on, lid on. Okay, that's number one, getting going. Number two, I promised to do this for my mom the other day, and then I wholly forgot to do it. Good morning, Mary Beth. Um, I wholly forgot to do it, and now she can't be on this morning because she had a doctor's appointment, but there you go. She knows how to do it now. Hi, Sandy. So we're gonna need some foil. We are going to do the roasted garlic. Many of you have done roasted garlic with Cindy's Kitchen. I have to tell you, it's a little slice of heaven. And if you buy the roasted garlic at the grocery store, it is so, so expensive. Oh, did you guys see snow in the background? The dogs are wandering. I get this big bag of garlic at Sam's. So maybe you don't go through as much garlic as I do, but I go through a lot of garlic. And so um, I get this big one. You can do one head of garlic at a time, or you can do multiple, all right? So there's our head. I'm gonna do uh, two in this batch. All right. So this is what they look like. There's the root at the bottom. Hello, how are you today? <laughs> anyway, the roots at the bottom. Love roasting the garlic. I know, it is so good. Good morning, Tony. Hi, Jenna. Good to see you. 
So there's the root at the bottom of the garlic. We're gonna cut off the top of these so that the uh, garlic is exposed, all right? So knife, get your knif, knif, make sure it's sharp. And we're just going to, so you can see, we're just gonna, okay, so can you see there? So we just, see, there you go. Now, you have some options. You could put this little bitty one in there as well and do both, but I'm not doing that. This is gonna go in my little trashy bowl, but we're gonna do something with it, all right? Um, and then I'm gonna do the other one too. Ta and da, look at that, okay? I'm taking the top, <clears throat> I'm gonna take off some of the floofiness, some of the little paper because I don't need all that paper in there, but I do need this. Okay, all right, so maybe I need two trash bowls. A trash bowl, an actual trash bowl, and the bowl that looks like a trash bowl, but is not a trash bowl. How about them apples? All right, it's sad that I'm using a unicap bowl for trash, but I always do, because you know, you gotta use them all, use them all. All right, so here's our garlic. We get our piece of tin foil, right? Aluminum foil, tin foil, whatever you call it. There you go. Now we take some oil. You can just use canola oil. You can use olive oil, doesn't really matter. And we're, we're gonna pour it just so it covers the top of each of these, all right? So I'm just gonna pour enough, just a, a little bit, like a teaspoon maybe, okay? Then we're gonna put some salt Cindy, how's your husband? You've been praying. Oh, Marcia, thank you so much. He's been back at work for the last five days. So, yes, garlic is very good for you. So there you go. So I'm gonna sprinkle salt on the tops of those. Then we're gonna wrap it up, seal that puppy up. And the puppy came over here, thought I was calling. <laughs> All right, so you just make a little garlic package. This goes in a 400 degree oven for an hour, just set it in there. It doesn't need to be put in a dish or anything. That's okay, I love garlic too, Lydia. Set that in the oven, just like that, one hour. All right, in the oven it goes, because my oven is already preheated. Move, puppies. Two, that was two, two we got going. And look at that, it's only been like a couple of minutes. Yes, he is feeling better, he is. Um, he actually got his stitches out yesterday from his surgery, so that's better. Uh, he worked in the ICU Sunday and Monday. He worked in the clinic on Wednesday, and he did the ICU yesterday and today. 400 degrees, Mary Beth. The temperature is 400 degrees. I, I put canola oil, Lori, but you could use olive oil, any kind of oil, just a, a little bit on the top and then salt on the top. Hey, Esther. Yes, Cheryl, new doggy. I know, tell Esther, tell Emerald hello. Esther traveled to Minnesota to visit her daughter, Emerald. Can I do it in the air fryer? You know, I have no idea. I've never done it in the air fryer. Maybe you should try it and let us know. I know, and Joanne, maybe I want the vampires. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We have our hamburger magic in our steamer going to town. We have our garlic all put together, roasting in the oven. That was two. Now, you may not have this, and I know that most of you are in snowy, really cold parts. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, my hair hasn't been red in a while. I need to, I need to color it, because <coughs> gray. Ugh. 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 Um, in Texas, it's been cold, don't get me wrong. We actually had slight slushy snow one day this week, which was weird. Um, but I still have things growing outside. And um, so my cauliflower is still doing good. My Brussels sprouts are still doing good. My herbs are still fine. I have basil, I have cilantro, I have Italian parsley, I have mint. So all of that is still okay. The tomatoes, so I have yellow tomatoes and, and red tomatoes. And so if they turn red, 
when they're this small and you, you give a little tug, it's time to come off. So they didn't get very big. This is like the biggest yellow one I got. So it's, it's a little bit bigger than like a cherry, but that's about it. Um, I'm in Houston, Tony, a little north of Houston anyway. Wait, Joanne, the steaming of the meat is the best thing because it doesn't give you indigestion. All that fat just runs down into the water. There you go. Oh, well, I, I should never get sick, Jenna, because I eat a lot of garlic. All right, so I have these, and so it's kind of not much more than a handful, right? That's what I have. Uh, if you have cherry tomatoes, if you have some tomatoes in your fridge that are going a little dodgy, <laughs> um, Manor, Texas. Oh, cool. So if you have some that are going a little dodgy, you could cut them up and, and do what I'm doing. I don't want these to go to waste. I could probably do a salad, but I'm not going to. Uh, when I have little tomatoes or tomatoes that are going dodgy, then what I will do is put a little oil. You can use olive oil. You can use canola oil, whichever you desire. I'm going to put a little oil on the tomatoes. Give it a toss. La, la, la. This is just a little baker, right? But you can, you know, whatever you want to bake it in. I am going to do some salt on there and some pepper, and then just give it a toss. Make sure the tomatoes don't fly out when I toss. Or you could stir, or you could get your hand in there and get it all oily. There you go. My garlic is in the oven at 400 degrees. I'm gonna roast these tomatoes in the oven at 400 degrees. And so I can use these in a sauce. Um, I can use these in a soup or a stew. Um, but the roasted, when the tomatoes are roasted, it's a whole different flavor, just like the garlic. Whole different flavor than when you eat them just raw like this. So, in the oven we go, 400 degrees. That's three. Now, I have an onion. I don't always do this, but I'm going to actually add I'm gonna dice up this onion and add it to my hamburger magic. Only because I'm using the hamburger, I usually, as a general rule, use the hamburger that I bag up either in tacos, uh, you know, like a Mexican restaurant uh, uh, recipe or an Italian recipe. And in both instances, I would put onions with the hamburger meat. So, that being said, I'm going to, this is a yellow onion, you could use a white onion. Um, I'm not certain about a purple onion, but you know, whatever. Uh, I'm, I know it looks a little wasteful. I, do you do this? Do you just like pull it and then you realize, gosh, that's kind of wasteful, but I do it anyway. There you go. A bowl full to eat. Well, you never, you can do it next time, right? All right, so here's my onion. I'm gonna go ahead and dice this up. And I'm going to, so I cut it in half so that it's got a flat, you know, flat area. Then slice one way, then turn it and, and go down this way, okay? And that gives me my dice. And because onions have layers, onions like, like, uh, oh, what was Shrek? Ogres, ogres have layers. Remember when, uh, <clears throat> in the movie when he was said, ogres are like onions and Donkey said, Smelly, moldy, stinky. No, no, no. Ogres layers, donkey. Ogres have layers. So anyway, onions have layers. Yeah, I, I have to tell you the, the hamburger meat, but it doesn't give me indigestion. It doesn't give me heartburn if I steam it. Only if I put it, you know, fry it in the skillet and then it's, you know, it's in all that grease and, I, you know. I'm not washing the meat after I cooked it because then all the seasoning that I put in there got washed away as well. Ugh, I don't want that. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Just so you can see everything that's going on and I don't wanna have to bring you back and forth. Mush doggies, mush. There we go. All right, I'm going to bring. <laughs> okay, this is hot. Ooh, there's all that steam. All right, so now, just so you can see what it looks like already. Can you see? 
So the meat's starting to brown. Still got a lot of red in there because, you know. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the onion in there. Go, baby, go. Now the, ooh, the onion will steam as well and it's going to put all of its yummy flavors. Everybody likes parfait. <laughs> Snow looks like, Snow is a great dog, she really is. Now, you have your option, because it's about every couple of minutes. You either want to take your wooden spoon or one of your potato mashers, whichever one you have, and, and give your meat a smash, okay? And that way, what you're doing is you're breaking up those large pieces and you're moving it all around so that everybody steams evenly. Evenly, I tell you. All right. Okay, lid back on. Ugh. Aren't these cute? Hello. All right, lid back on. Back on the stove top we go. All right, so now remember I told you we had several things we were making today. I have another pot. This is a soup pot. Hey, Alex, good morning. Um, and so, one of the things I think is the worst waste of money is stock. Chicken sauce, I don't know. Joanne Terry said that the other day that the Pampered Chef Meat Masher, I don't have one. I've never even seen one. I'll have to look that up. Anyway, um, one of the things I think is a big waste of money is stock. Chicken stock, veggie stock, beef stock, because if you look at the number one ingredient in all those stocks, it's water mostly water. I saw on a video a couple months ago, and I really wish I could remember the lady's name. It was like a home cook in New York. And she did it and I went, oh, why? I've been wasting things. So here we go. A pot, you need a pot. Remember my trash bowl? No, Joanne, don't spend any more money on me. I appreciate it, but you, you were the one that introduced us all to the Danish batter whisk. All right, remember our trash bowl? So we had our onion with the, the peel still on it. Put that in your pot. <gasps> with the skin on it, Cindy? Yes, look, there's the top. Remember the tops of the garlic that we, we roasted? Look at that, there's the tops. I'm putting that in there. With all that skin on there, Cindy? Yes. In my refrigerator, I have this. You have this, the bag of carrots, and they're dodgy. Like, they're dodgy. Let me show you. They're starting, they're like, look, see? They're not even like stiff anymore. They're all like dodgy, dodgy, I tell you. So, there's not much I can do with it. I mean, I could roast them. I could roast them, but I'm not going to. Now, I'm not gonna cut the ends off. I'm just gonna cut them smack in half. And you really don't even need to cut them smack in half. You could just dump them in there, all right? There we go. The other thing in my crisper that's getting dodgy, Nina, it's fine, is this celery. And one of the reasons it gets dodgy is because I have a tendency to leave it in these plastic bags, which I know I shouldn't, but I do. Okay, now I'm actually gonna use this for trash. See how icky that is? Well, I don't want that. So I'm gonna peel that off because that's like slimy icky. All right, the rest of this is fine. See, it's fine. Just that icky dodgy. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. Look, see, cut it in half, in it goes. Really, Cindy, what are you making? Trash soup? Kind of, there you go. The last thing I'm gonna put in here, so you all know that I keep my roasted garlic in this little container, right? And I have just a, just a wee smidge in there. Since I am restocking, I'm putting brand new roasted garlic in there. I'm just gonna take the leftover roasted garlic out of there, and that way everybody starts fresh. Okay, although, Roasted garlic doesn't last very long in this house anyway. All right, so what did we put in here? We put in the ends from the onion, some dodgy carrots, some dodgy celery, including the end, 
uh, the, the ends from the, how should we store our celery? I don't know. I usually use it fast enough. Um, I, I've heard that a lot of people like go ahead and cut it all up and clean it and, and wash it and dry it and put it in like plastic containers or they have those little bags that you buy, green something or another. I just didn't want to buy yet another thing. And so <clears throat> I just try to use it. And when it goes dodgy like that, I use it with something else. So there we go. So we have all these kind of ends and pieces. It doesn't matter what you have in your refrigerator. You can put it in there. Now, I am going to add salt. One, two. I'm going to add some pepper. Okay. And then water. Okay. This is my carafe. Just plain old water. Because what is the major ingredient in stock? Water. And it's free here. You put it in water on the counter. Huh. My counters are filled with, filled with Polish butter. All right, there we go. We're going to bring this to a boil. Come on. Come on. Oh, hold on. Oh, there we go. I have one of those burners that it doesn't like to come on all the time. All right, let's check our meat again. Let's check the meat. Wait, where did I put the other? Oh, here we go. Let's check our meat. <laughs> so heavy. All right, potato masher, here we go. And we're gonna mash. For the best results, keep celery heads whole. Are they done? Celery heads whole, wrap them up tightly in aluminum foil and then keep them in their refrigerator. Huh, I would have never thought about that. Huh, aluminum foil. Well, there we go. I had no idea. Thank you, Vicki Ann, for letting us know. Okay, again, just every couple of minutes, give it a smash and then let it keep cooking. It takes, reminds me of a story, stone soup. I remember that from school, Cindy. Excuse me, puppies. Oh. Um, just, a little, just a little bit. Okay, so now what do we have going? I love that story, stone soup. And did you all read that when you were growing up, the story of stone soup? It was a great story. Hi, Cleanne, good to see you. So, the first thing we did is we started our hamburger magic. We have our hamburger, um, an onion, a diced onion, salt and pepper in our steamer, and it's steaming away. And every couple of minutes, we're taking our masher and we're mashing it up, okay? So that's cooking until it's all done. When it's all done, I will take it out and dump it out on a sheet pan and just let it cool. And then after it cools, I'll divide it up into freezer bags. And so like I may have one cup in a freezer bag or I may have two cups in a freezer bag, just depends. I usually get about a cup a pound. So there you go. You never heard of stone soup? It's a short story I had to read in junior high, I think. I think that's when I read it. Anyway, so our hamburger is going. The second thing we did was our roasted garlic. We just, the dog was looking at the stove, I'm sure. The um, cut off the heads of the, the top of the big head of garlic, a little oil, a little salt, wrap it all up in foil, 400 degrees, roast it for an hour, okay? The third thing we did was I had some little tomatoes that off my bushes that turned early. I put those in a dish, put a little oil, a little salt, a little pepper, put those at 400 degrees and they're roasting, okay? So there you go. And then now we started our veggie stock. And so all we did is we took some dodgy vegetables. So we cleaned out our, our vegetable crisper, obviously. And um, the leftover ends from the onion and the garlic that we'd already used and put that in a pot with water and we're gonna bring that to a boil. Really, Cindy? And it makes a great veggie stock. Um, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. Now, I still, I have to show you that this is my taco seasoning. I make my own taco seasoning, right? Because paying a dollar every time you make tacos 
or enchiladas or whatever you're making with taco seasoning, taco soup, a dollar for one of those packages is a little bit much, right? So I just make my own, but it's low. Look how low it is. So we're gonna make taco seasoning. All right, here we go. You need a bowl, not a huge bowl, just a little bowl. I like this one, it's called chicory. I need to check my maters. Hold on one second. Oh, okay. So these were only in about 10 minutes. They've released some juice. That's all juice in there and they've cracked. The skin has gotten a little pruney and that's it. I mean, that took no time at all. If you were using bigger tomatoes, then you might need to leave them in there a little longer. But there we go. And I will use those tomatoes either in a soup or a stew or a sauce. I am gonna do the taco seasoning recipe. So here we go. Let me find my taco soup recipe. We've done this on the show before, <clears throat> but we're gonna do it again. So get you a small bowl, and I have everything I'm gonna need on this little tray. I do find when you're cooking, it's called a um, mise en place, is the French word, mise en place and you make sure that you get all the ingredients you're gonna need for any recipe and set them all out before you start, and that way you know that you have all your ingredients. You don't get halfway through a recipe and realize that it calls for two cups of something and you only have half a cup, or you don't have a particular seasoning. All right, so here we go. We have a bowl. We are gonna start with chili powder. Nope, that's cayenne, hold on. Oregano, cumin, hold on. Where did I put the chili powder? I, hold on. Oh, no, I think I missed the chili powder. Hold on. Hello, chili powder. There it is. Hold on, let me. Our meat is going well. All right, chili powder. Here we go, chili powder. We need one tablespoon of chili powder. Now, my tablespoon does not fit in this hole, so I'm going to do this. I like chili powder. Okay, a tablespoon of chili powder. That's the first one. Now we're gonna need a half of a tablespoon of cornstarch. Cornstarch. Cornstarch is usually what we use to thicken things, right? Half of a tablespoon. I'm not gonna get the half a tablespoon. I'm just gonna take my tablespoon and fill it halfway, okay? La la la. Okay. This is what we usually use to thicken things. Sauces or soups or stews, you use cornstarch. Or use it in puddings. That's what thickens puddings is cornstarch. All right, now we're gonna need some smoked paprika. <clears throat> Yum, you know how I love this. And everything after this is a half a table, well, for the next couple ones, is a half a tablespoon. Okay, so our smoked paprika, we need, ooh, ooh Cindy. Sugar, just plain old white sugar, half a tablespoon. Oh, you know what? I used the teaspoon side. Hold on, I gotta get some more smoked paprika. I used the wrong side, ooh! Half a tablespoon, not half a teaspoon, goober. Okay, there we go. Smoked paprika, sugar. You're gonna need some ground cumin. Do you have ground cumin? Ground cumin. Half of a tablespoon, okay? There we go. Now, garlic powder, you have this, right? Good morning, Victoria. You have garlic powder, right? You're gonna need one teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of onion powder. My onion powder is in another one of these. All right? You're gonna need salt, because you know. One teaspoon of salt. A teaspoon of oregano, although Anne, Anne is in the UK, and in the UK they say oregano. Instead of oregano, they say oregano. So if you're in the UK, or if you're not in the US, use oregano. If you're in the US, use oregano, just saying. Hello, Victoria in New Hampshire. All right, and so we're gonna need a teaspoon of oregano or oregano, right? 
Um, a half a teaspoon of pepper, black pepper. You can use white pepper, whatever you want. And this is an optional, wholly up to you, but chili powder, I mean uh, cayenne. I, does it matter which cumin I use? No, you can just use uh, regular ground cumin. You can use smoked cumin, that's fine too. How much smoked paprika? A half of a tablespoon. I'm gonna post the recipe today when I, you know, when I do, but anyway. All right, so cayenne pepper. I like my, this has a shaker on it. I like my stuff a little spicy. So this is totally up to you. I would say a fourth of a teaspoon, but maybe you like it really hot. And so maybe you want a whole teaspoon or maybe you don't like it hot very much, maybe an eighth, okay? All right, so there we go. And that is that, my friends. I should have doubled this up. There we go. The only thing uh, you can use, let's see, a little whisk. You can use a spoon, you can use a little whisk. You just wanna make sure it's totally uh, mixed together because you don't wanna get, you want a, a good mix, right? There we go. This is my taco seasoning holder. So you can see there's just a little bit left in there. Uh, let me, let me do this. And I will just spoon it in. So for me to fill this, then I'd normally have to double it, but I didn't want you guys to go, that's a lot of taco seasoning. So you can double it. So this will make probably around a half of my container. Just depends. How much smoked paprika? Uh, half a tablespoon. Smoked, did I already say that? H half a tablespoon. Okay, there we go. All right, in, in, in. I almost need a funnel, don't I? So I don't make a mess. All right, there we go. See, didn't make very much, but that's actually enough for me. Uh, I've never put sugar in mine. It just, you know, salt and sugar both just little flavor enhancers. So there, you'd have to make a bunch to fill up this thing. Then I, you know, I want my old and my new to get together and meet each other and there we go. See, there you go. So you can double or triple. It just depends on how many tablespoons per pound of beef. Um, I use between one and two tablespoons for a pound of beef. Again, depends on how much of a spice you want um, or, you know, not so spicy, right? Up to you. So I would say between one and two tablespoons per pound of hamburger meat. Want to sell that chicory bowl? Ha ha ha. Lori, I do not want to sell my chicory bowl. <laughs> I know. I love that. All right. So let's, uh, we got our taco seasoning made. Hold on. Let me clean up my space. Let me clean my space. I got a mess. I got a mess, I say. What are you guys cooking for dinner tonight? Tell me what you're cooking for dinner. We've got one more recipe we're gonna do. Tell me, tell me. Hello, Kathleen. All right. Let me get this back. Wait, I gotta put these back on. And we're gonna, we're gonna check our hamburger again. <laughs> there we go, very heavy. Very heavy. Get you a steam bath going, right? All right. Again, our masher, tacos. Yeah, lasagna, yum. See, I have this hamburger meat, and so that means that I won't freeze it all. I'll leave uh, some of it out, and then I'll decide what we're gonna have tonight. I can't decide if I want, like, um, a noodles with hamburger meat and tomatoes, you know, kind of like a like a goulash, or if I wanna do tacos. But either way, cause I have my taco stuff. Actually, you're making crispy tacos, yum. Pork chops and cabbage noodles, chili, garbage pizza. Does that mean everything you have going on? All right, we're almost done. Can you believe it that this is almost done? Yes, it's almost done. Chicken wings, yum. Coleslaw goes well with chicken wings or a potato salad goes well with chicken wings. 
French fries, tater tots, all the things that aren't good for us. They all go good with chicken wings. I love some roasted garlic chicken wings. Billy Tinker, I'm so glad you're here. Homemade noodles and chicken over mashed potatoes. Yum. You got the double carb going, don't you, Cleanne? Noodles and taters. That's okay. Sounds good. Um, Billy Tinker, I have a project for you. So, Rebecca says you are the crafty one. You know I do those diamond dot art things, and I save all the dots that I don't use. Look, I have all these dots. Because I figure I can do something with them. I don't like to throw stuff away. So, there you go. Tell me I need a project with all these little dots. That's up to you. Rob has no carbs. Um, well, you know what, Mary Beth? Like we did the, um, the naked egg roll in a bowl the other day. You could certainly do something like that with veggies. You know, whatever kind of veggies you have in the crisper. Um, and add, you know, zucchini, yellow squash, and all of that with the hamburger meat and have, you know, then you've got a lot of good different flavors in there, okay? Fresh cod. Well, there you go. All right. Um, oh, we got to make our fifth one. Okay, Billy, I'm excited. You don't know what you're having for dinner. The, the other thing we're going to make... Oh, here. Oh, hold on. I got to tilt. My stock has got a little boil over going. All right, I need another bowl. Look how pretty that one is. I don't even know what this one's called. Does anybody know if she put a name to this? Is it a unicat? No, it's not a unicat bowl. It's just a traditional pattern. And I don't know what it is, but I think it's gorgeous. All right. So several of you know, um, like Lisa, Rebecca, uh, I don't think um, Vicky's on, but several of you knew me or were worked for Homemade Gourmet. Homemade Gourmet, we, it was food mixes. One of my favorite things to make was this thing, uh, was spice roll or spice dip. And um, so I'm gonna show you what we're gonna make. I'm gonna make a big thing of spice dip and so that I'll have it in bulk, okay? Egg rolls, yum. All right, so I, I need a bowl. There's my bowl. I'm gonna need a whole cup, a whole cup of brown sugar. Oh, I think my brown sugar, I need to refill. I need to refill my brown sugar. Now, again, remember that when you're doing brown sugar, you pack it in your cup. So there you go, packed. Brown sugar in. All right. Ooh, there we go. All right, then to this, we're gonna add, look, this is my Saigon cinnamon. Again, my friend Joanne, has turned me on to the Danish batter whisk and the Saigon cinnamon. It's like, you know, there you go. Richard from Sandwich, Illinois. Good to see you. All right, so we're gonna need a teaspoon. I know, right? A whole cup of this and only a teaspoon of cinnamon? Yes. Where's my, oh, here we go. All right, I know I use this to make taco stuff, but I'm just gonna use my wet one and wipe it off. And we're gonna use it again. All right, so what did I say? A teaspoon, right? Teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and I'm using the Saigon cinnamon. Okay, and then we need a half of a teaspoon. Really, only a half? Diana, good to see you. Diana is uh, family. Ground cloves. Now, normally you only use this like around Thanksgiving or Christmas, right? So you get to use them again. Half of a teaspoon of ground cloves, okay? There you go. Now, we gotta stir. You just got that cinnamon, haven't? Oh, okay, well, Lydia, the difference is, I'm gonna stir with this end. The difference is when you smell it, it's kinda like if you open your old ground cinnamon and give it a sniff, it's, it's like listening to somebody play the piano. Then, you take the lid off of the Saigon cinnamon and take a big whiff, and it's like somebody is playing a symphony. That is the difference between regular old cinnamon that you get at the grocery store and the Saigon, well, you could get Saigon cinnamon at the grocery store too. All right, so here we go. I'm just mixing this all together, making sure it's mixed, and, and if my brown sugar has any lumps, get those out. All right, now, what do I do with this? All right, well, first, I'm gonna store it and you guys will think you can put it in any storage container that has a lid 
This is one of my to-go mugs. I know, I'm weird, but this is what, this is where it's going. So in a, in a to-go mug, all right? And I'm just gonna spoon this in. Oh, so good. Mm. Mm. I got it on the tip of my nose. All right. We're shoveling it in here. And it just about fills my cup because this is a 16 ounce, a 16 ouncer. And so that's just about what we need. I think it's 16 ounces. Anyway. Okay, there we go. Look, yum. And then I just put the lid on it and set it on the counter. There we go. It's like angels playing a symphony. Has anybody else tried the Saigon cinnamon? Tell us what you, if you like it. Um, I know there was one lady that got it and tried it and she didn't like it. Nell, was that you? I can't remember. Um, but if you've tried it, tell us what you think. All right. Now, what would I do with this? All right. And I'm going to show you. The grocery store had blueberries on sale. Now, you could use strawberries or blueberries or raspberries or blackberries or razzleberries, whatever kind of berries you have. Or you could use any kind of fruit. I know, it's great, isn't it? All right, um, a little tiny. Okay, let's use a little bowl. So this would be like my morning snack, or it could be dessert. I cook apples with my grandbabies all the time, so good. All right, I already, you know, washed them, put them back in here. All right, so I'm gonna fill the bowl with blueberries. Okay, blueberries. Then I'm going to take, oh, our meat's almost done. The lid off a big container of whipped topping. This is generic whipped topping, but if you wanna use the other brand, you know what brand I'm talking about. You certainly can do that. We are going to put, hold on one second. Um, where's my, oh, there we go. We are gonna put four tablespoons. It is good in oatmeal, yes it is. We are gonna put four tablespoons of this and I'm just gonna leave it in the Cool Whip, I mean in the whipped topping container. Four tablespoons right in there. Look at that, look. Okay, now take a spoon or a whisk, whatever you wanna do. You certainly could put this in a bowl so you don't have to be so careful. I'm just being lazy. Um, and I took this out of the freezer this morning so it may not even be all the way, all the way there, but that's okay. So you could use a spoon, you could use a fork. Um, this is good. You, if you don't want to use this, you could use, um, you could use it in yogurt instead of in whipped topping. Um, it's just as good. You know, sometimes during the year they have whipped topping flavors, like they have vanilla or, um, whatever. It's good in that. I like it, um, on toast. I like it on my oatmeal. I like it in my malt meal Yogurt, I don't like yogurt, but it's good in yogurt, I've been told. Okay, once this is all the way whipped up, now normally I would tell you what you need to do because you need all the flavors to meld, is to put this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and let it all meld together. Mm, but I shan't be doing that. Mm, yum! And then after 30 minutes, look at this. You just put a big old dollop. Right on top. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So good. All right. Back in we go. Let's check our meat. It's time to check the meat. All right. Here's the meat. Can you see it? Woo! I got a facial. I got a meat facial. That's what I got. All right, so can you see our meat and onions are done? All of the grease drained down into the bottom of that water. And so none of the grease remains on my meat. 
Oh, cinnamon upsets your stomach. Oh, no. Oh, thank you, Diana. All right. So, it's all cooked. It's all yummy. And so, what would we do with this? So, what would we do with this? We would. Mm. Oh, we would get out one of these. A big old baking sheet. And then just take your meat. Okay? Give it a shake, make sure all the excess liquid comes off. And I'm just gonna pour it on the baking sheet. Make sure you get all the good yumminess out of there. Now, several of you are gonna be upset and say, what do you do with that greasy water? And so my answer to you is you can uh, put some soap in there, some Dawn soap and it'll cut it up and then turn on your garbage disposal and put it down there. If you live out in the country or somewhere, you could put it, just throw it outside, right? Um, it's up to you. Sometimes if the puppies are good, you might wanna save it and pour a little bit over the puppy food. The puppies will like that, right? Okay, so the ones that didn't get mashed up, I'm mashing it so that I have nice uniform, Woo! Little crumb sizes. La, la, la. Okay. Now this is a big baking sheet. This is a half sheet pan. Okay? So if you're wondering how big of a pan this is, a half sheet pan. Okay? And look, totally fills the half sheet pan. That was five pounds of hamburger meat and one onion diced up. I will let this just set out and cool. I make flan and usually put cinnamon and vanilla in it. Oh, oh, I think it would, Lydia. So I would let this cool. Then once it's cool, I'll get some freezer bags and I'll divide this up into freezer bags. So it depends on how many people are at your house. So maybe you only want a cup of hamburger meat so that you can make a single something for yourself. Maybe there's two of you, so maybe you want two cups. It's a good way to portion your meat if you're looking at how much you're, you're eating. Or if you're cooking for a big family, you know, maybe you do half of this. These, this is great in queso, queso con carne, you know, with a little meat in there. Um, it's great in spaghetti with meat sauce. It's great for tacos. And then, so I'm just gonna freeze this. When I'm done, a Kahlua flan, Oh my, Lori, Kahlua flan. I need that recipe. Oh, you could add more water to the greasy water and cook your noodles in it. I could, but then it would defeat the purpose of getting rid of the grease so I don't get indigestion. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put this aside because it has to cool, but then that's gonna go in my freezer. And so that is restocked. All right. Remember this little package? I did one earlier, so there you go. Here's my container that I keep my roasted garlic in. Here we go. Oh, I ran long today. Uh, Esther, you can usually get it at the grocery store, but Costco and I think Sam's carries it. All right, so here's what it looks like when it comes out of the oven all roasted. You see how it's a little brown? One of them is kind of squirting out. Look, that's got like a little side pocket on it, right? All right, so all we're gonna do then is we're gonna squeeze, all right? Uh, let's see how I can do this. Okay, if I squeeze on the big one, watch. Do you see how they pop up? So I'm gonna just put it over my container and squeeze, okay? Now, maybe it comes out smushy, like some of those are a little mushy, I don't care unless you're concerned about measuring an exact clove of garlic, it doesn't really matter, okay? I don't want any skin in there, but. And I just squeeze until it all comes out because I don't want to lose any of the yummy roasted garlic. Yeah, look, mm. this is really good if you're saying, okay, well, regular garlic is fine in my recipes. I'm telling you, this is really good. Yes, that's a good idea, Vicki, yes. Uh, this is really good just on bread, like on toast. <gasps> so good. 
But the, the roasted garlic is, is so much sweeter than raw garlic, right? Raw garlic has that bite to it. The roasted garlic is just sweet. It's got a sweet flavor. Now, if you did one or you did two, or usually I can get between three and four whole heads of garlic into my little container. Go this way. And so then all you do is you take some olive oil. It is a wet, that's why I have these. I love these. Um, olive oil, and you just wanna make sure it's all flat down in there. Okay, you just wanna make sure that all of the garlic is covered. If you do not, you can use canola oil. I just use olive oil. Um, oh, you got it at Ross for $2, wow. If you don't cover all of the oil, I mean all of the garlic with oil, um, if it's exposed to air, it could start to grow a mold or a mildew. We don't want that, so as long as you cover it. I don't put this in the refrigerator. I actually leave it on the counter. Um, and it lasts a couple weeks. Well, I say that, but garlic doesn't last a couple weeks in my house. But if you don't use garlic that often and you don't feel comfortable, you can put it in your refrigerator, it's fine. Just make sure it's totally covered with oil and it has a lid, and there you go. All right, so we did our tomatoes. Look, we roasted our little tomatoes that we pulled out of the garden. Look, oh, oh, they smell so good. So I'm gonna do a sauce or something with that. We remade our taco seasoning. We made spice dip. And to the spice dip, we added it into a container of whipped topping. And we topped a big bowl of blueberries with it, but you could do whatever. We've made five pounds of hamburger meat that's going to be divided up and to put into freezer bags for meals. Move, move, I tell you. And the last thing we're gonna do Oh, I need my, I need these again. Ugh. Move. Remember our stock that we made with all the ends and pieces and the dodgy looking vegetables? Well, here we go. Now, these were dodgy vegetables to begin with, so I don't need to keep them. So I'm just gonna take my spider, my spider, and I'm just gonna pull all of those dodgy veggies out. Now, if you wanted, if you weren't as, like, I put the end pieces in here, I put the paper in here. If you didn't do all that, you could take the veggies and puree them with the food processor. You certainly could do that. Um, but again, I didn't even cut the ends off. And I put the paper in here, you know, the outside skin from the onion and the garlic. And so, you don't wanna do that. All right, here we go. Let me do this. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out how much I have in here, but we'll do this just so you can see it. Hold on. Okay, here's my one cup. I'm gonna have Jess help, okay? So Jess is gonna help. Um, you wanna pour? Yeah. Okay, so Jess is gonna pour. I'm gonna hold the spider, or if you have another kind of strainer, so she's gonna pour this over. Sit down. Okay. Lop, oh, making a mess, making a mess. That's enough. Okay, we'll pour the rest in. It's a little over two cups. So see, we strained it out. Now we have a little over two cups of veggie stock, fresh veggie stock. There are no chemicals, there are no additives. There's no extra anything on here. So it was just the dodgy vegetables, the ends of the onion, the ends of the garlic, um, and some salt and pepper, all right? We should, we should taste. Well, what did I mix? I don't know what I used that one for, but we'll do this. Okay. Mm. See, it's got a rich vegetable flavor. Yeah, but see, Nina, I didn't even go buy stuff to make stock. I just used the leftover crud so that nothing went to waste. And so I got, a, it's gonna be end up a little over two cups of homemade veggie stock. So there you go. And ha, had I uh, boiled a chicken in there when I'd done that, I'd have chicken stock. So there you go. We made a bunch of stuff. We made spice dip and then mixed it with whipped topping and put it over blueberries. 
We made homemade taco seasoning, so we're saving money doing that. We made homemade chicken broth. We made roasted garlic. We made roasted tomatoes, and we did hamburger magic, so I have enough hamburger for at least four meals. Wow, it was a big day. I know we went long today, but look at all that we got accomplished. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Thank you guys for being here today. From my kitchen to your kitchen, whoo, restock your pantry basics. Get it all done in one day, and then you've got it all for the rest of the week or a couple of weeks. You guys, would you advise only root vegetables for stock? No, I throw everything in there, Lori. Whatever you got, throw it in there. I'm saying. You guys have an awesome day. I will see you again on Saturday. Have a good one. Bye-bye.